So let's have a look at the color and distance sensor on the LEGO website. Wait, it's retired? Hi, welcome back to KK Builds. My name is KK and I build, I built with LEGO. In this second video on train automation, I would like to automate more than one LEGO train using the Powered Up uh, app on the iPad, right? So what do we need for that? We need extra color sensors. I found mine last week. I couldn't quite find it. So we had to delay the video for a week, but there you have it. It's right here. So we can continue with our plan. Also in the last video that was about train automation, I wasn't really sure if the powered up color and distance sensor were still available on the Lego website. And it turns out that they're not. Now, that's a bit of a bummer, right? Because here I am showing you all these kinds of cool things that you can do with them and they're not available. So I reached out to Lego, I sent them an email via their site and uh, this is what I got back actually. So um, it says, Dear KK, thank you for reaching out. We're happy to hear that you're motorizing our Lego trains. Quite a task. I've checked the color and distance sensor number 88007 and it looks like it's discontinued without any variance so all i can do for you is to note it down for our high up teams and hope that it comes back one thing i could recommend to you is looking into bricklink perhaps you could find a well-reviewed seller who can provide the sensor that you need otherwise if you have any comments or questions we're here to have to assist and listen P.S. I've checked your video and it looks absolutely amazing. It's amazing how you motorize that train. I could never in my lifetime do that. Well, that's why we're making the videos, right? So you can follow my instructions and then you can do it as well and have a true-tastic day ahead. Too bad it is not what I was looking for, <laughs> obviously. I had a look on Bricklink as well. There aren't any sellers at the moment that are selling the color sensor, at least in Europe, I don't think. so. Uh, can be quite difficult to get any of these sensors should you want to get one. Now, what we can do is obviously uh, mail Lego as individual users and ask for them to bring back the color sensor. So if you are looking this video and you're thinking, wow, I want this color sensor back, mail uh, Lego and see what we say. Tell them that you saw this video and that uh, we are uh, enthusiast in the train automation thing and that we really would like a, a color sensor or something that does the same, I guess, maybe in a newer version, I don't know. Uh, but maybe it will help. We never know, right? We can always try. So now that we got that out of the way, make sure to uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're into train automation, because we're gonna make two more videos on this subject using the color sensor. For this video, like I said in the beginning, we are going to try and uh, automate more than one train on the same layout using one iPad um, with the powered up system, these ones, right? And the color sensor. So let's take a look at what we have to do. First of all, we need to build another train like this one with a color sensor and a powered up system. This one is from the Stubgate Bricklink Designer set. And yeah, it would be cool to have this one uh, going around the track, right? So let's do that first. So here we have the um, train that comes with the Stopgate station. This one obviously is not motorized whatsoever. Um, and we need to do that. And also we need to fit the color sensor in here. Um, it might be a little bit of a challenge because it's a full interior, as you can see. So there's not much room for that in here. But I guess we just need to uh, take everything out. Also, oh, it comes out already. Look, <laughs> that's easy enough. So also, if you take a look at the bottom, we've got the two bogies here. And what we did with the last one, obviously, is that we use these holes for the cables, right? So these bogies probably need to go. We've got bogies from another train. So we've got the motor unit and we've got the double axle one. And we are choosing this one because it ha it uses less space than uh, the one on the right, right? So that's 
what we were thinking. So obviously uh, this magnet can go, we don't need that. Um, well, actually we do need it, yeah. That needs to be on that side. So this one can go here. Oops. We can take this one out. Cable goes in here. Otherwise, the color sensor won't fit. So, here's the color sensor. It needs to go up here as well through the hole. Let's see if we can put it in a way that uh, makes sense for us. I think we should do it over like so. Yeah, that can be good, I think. And then let's see if the battery box fits in here as well. Yeah, it sure does. That's cool. Obviously, we need the um, on the other side the ports. And as with the other one that I showed you, right? A and B. Make sure you remember where you put the motor and where you put the color sensor. It doesn't matter if it's A or B or the other way around, as long as you remember, because you need that in programming the train. So let me try and figure something out with these and um, tidy it all up and then I'll get back to you. Okay, we did change some things around and this is what it looks like now. We've got the motor in here, we've got the battery box in here, color sensor is placed and a different bogey on the front end because we don't really have more space. I guess we could space it out one. Maybe we could do that right now. Looks a little bit different than more like so. Now obviously you need to do something with the whole um, masking of the color sensor, right? So you don't see it anymore. But this should be good to go. All the different components are in there. So yeah. The only downside about this one is you need to take the lid off and then uh, power up your train. Make sure it connects to the iPad and uh, there you go. Nice. Let's take a look at the iPad then. So as you can see, we have our iPad here. We go to the create thing again, right? Instead of the play, play is just a normal sets and then create. We have our uh, other different programs that we made and we make a new one. Let's call it multi trains or something. Doesn't really matter, right? But okay. And then we do this and we say coding. And then we need to connect the trains because that's obviously a thing that we need to do. And we go here, we press connect on this one. It starts running all these things. There you go, that's one. And now if you go here again, I think we could rename this one, call it, um, sorry, that one. Go back. Stop gate. Because it's the stop gate train, so we know which one it is, right? There we go. So you see here, phrase. It's the second one. I think we should be able to. There you go. So you see, both are here. So that's, this is the freight train. We call this freight, but we are actually using it for passengers, I guess. Doesn't really matter the name, as long as you know which one is which. So there you can see, we added two of the hubs. 
So that's already different than last step, right? So previously you, you only had one, now you have two. So both are connected. What you need to do is the following. So it's kind of weird, right? Because over here we said uh, step gate and freight, but here it refers to them as one and two and three and four. So you can connect up to four different trains. Um, these are obviously the ports that you use. So for my motor, it's A and then that's the speed. So here's how you do that, right? Okay, after a little bit of trying out, or trial and error, if you will, I made the following. Train one starts driving at a speed of 50 until it hits a red uh, square on the track. Now we stop the train and the second train starts running also at 50, right? Again, until it hits the red patch, then it stops and then train, um, the first train reverses, like that's the minus 50 right over there, right? Until it hits a yellow patch and then the whole thing begins again. So the other train goes in the uh, backwards again. Here it says uh, run the program again and then it starts off at the front again. So we have a nice little loop of events, right? And uh, this should work really well, actually. I did this uh, earlier with uh, another layout that I had. And um, yeah, they, this worked very well. So the reason that I use red here and yellow there is because if the train hits red here and it tells the engine to stop, the train shoots over the red patch. And if you were to reverse the train over here, and have it read a red patch over here again, it crosses the first red, red patch that it just crossed. And then it will go on and on and on and not go over the red patch, right? So that's what we did. Let's see how that looks in the, in the layout. So again, here's the layout. In the foreground, you see the, um, the iPad, right? With the code that we made, we've got the two trains over here ready to go. There's a red patch on the end of each track. And over here, you can see the first yellow patch and there's another one on the second track. So let's just um, fire it up and see what it does, right? So we already, the lessons learned from last time, we took into account, right? So we have the, the colors for uh, four studs long so that the train has more uh, distance that it crosses over the color so that it can read it better. So. Uh, fingers crossed, this should all work. So let's go. Here goes one. It hits the red, it stops, the other one goes. Other one goes back again. Until it is yellow. And the other one comes back as well. Until it hits yellow, it cannot get up the hill. <laughs> we need to change the speed. One second. Okay, we changed the speed to minus 60 over here. You can barely see it probably, but um, trust me on this one. And <laughs> there we go again. So the program starts in the front again, where it says, okay, first train starts running at four or 50 until it hits red. Then it stops, second train, runs at 50 until it hit red, it stops again. It goes backwards at 60 until it hits yellow and the same for the other train and then from the front again. So let's let's start it and see what it does. This looks like an uh, automated thing, right? We're not touching anything and the trains are going. Very cool indeed. Let's look at it from another angle, shall we? Tell me what you guys think. I think this is pretty cool, right? So we can clearly see the train stopping at the red squares over there. We've got them over there on the track. 
if it crosses it, the color sensor says, hey, it's red, let's stop the engine, wait for the other train, and then go back again. Obviously, we need to do something about this scene, right? Because this is a whole freight terminal thing, right? Not a passenger train terminal, but that's what we're building over there. And that's where we uh, will focus on next video, because these two trains will stop at that station over there. So if you want to see uh, how that would turn out and what we're doing with that, then um, make sure to follow the channel. And we'll see you in the next video where we uh, dive more into, um, I would say, a little bit more complex um, train automation, adding some different colors or maybe different stops. Maybe we could take a look at if it uh, crosses some color, then it speeds up or slows down. So yeah, let's take a look at that in the next video. For this video, I think we achieved our goal. We um, managed to run two trains from one iPad using the powered up system with the color uh, sensors. So good job, guys. Now, I hope that you liked that video that we just did. Um, it hopefully gave you some insight into how you could incorporate multiple trains on the same layout using the system. And it might have given you some tips on how to do so. So let me know in the comments what you think, what you want to see. I already got some feedback on the last video um, stating that people would want to see more uh, complex uh, routines or programs in the iPad, right? Um, we could have a look at that and see what we can do. But for now, uh, the next video is going to be about um, incorporating this whole thing into a city um, and see where we go from there, right? The next one is probably not the last video that we're going to do on this train automation subject, but it is the last one in this series of three that I had planned in my head. So there you go. If you cannot wait for a next video on train automation, city building, Lego collecting or whatever, there should be a video over here and over here that you can watch in the meantime. If you appreciate my content, let me know by liking the video and subscribing to my channel as it will help it grow. Thank you very much for watching. Have an awesome weekend and see you next time. Bye bye.